It's the 21st of June 2013 and I'm with model and photographer Ben James. So Ben, you're at Scott's Memorial and it's the first time you've been here. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually pretty cool. It's tells an in-depth story pretty much. I, uh, I knew a little bit about like their journey and stuff but I didn't really know a huge amount. Um, but yeah, like the words, the diary, some words from the diary around here. And um, you kind of get a sense of the guy that he wasn't, he wasn't really angry about what was going on. Um, he, he basically, like, like it says, he took risks. Like they knew what was going to happen. Um, and, you know, he just sort of like, he dealt with it. They knew, well, he knew he was going to die. Um, there's words that, you know, you, you'll see that it's not, you know, if, it's when. They have no cause for complaint because yeah. they took risk. So, yeah, I mean, it's very thought provoking, isn't it? Yeah. It's about uh, life in general, not just about this one expedition. It's about, you know, accepting the consequences of, of what you do in life. Exactly, like for every consequence, there's, you know, for every action is a consequence. For every bad action is a consequence. Yeah. So you, you know, you have to think about what you're doing in life and live life to the full. Uh, you can sit back and just let it go by and then before you know it, you're 67 years old and thinking, I wish I did more. And that goes very quickly. Oh yeah, like when I left school when I was about, what, 16, 17? Yeah. And um, yeah, I, uh, it just went so fast. Like, I'm, I'm 23 next month. Yeah. And, you know, I, I remember when I was just like, I was 18 and now it's just, you know, I want to do so much with my life. I don't want to, I don't want it to like pass me by and, you know, what if I did that, you know, I want to do it. Yeah. Well, we've already spoken about using each day constructively so that you're yeah. doing something productive in life, you know. A lot of yeah. people, a lot of people are just living living on a daily basis and not really achieving anything at all. Exactly. But that's up to them, I suppose, you know. I mean, I, I, I want to sort of, every day is like a new journey for me. Um, as, as cliche as it sounds, it is. Um, like, I, I can't see in the future. I'm not going to know what's going to happen when I wake up. Um, but I know that I'm going to do something that's going to like help me with my future. I'm doing something that I extremely enjoy, yeah. which is photography. Like everyone has to have a passion in life and have a goal, yeah. And it's up to them whether they choose to go for that goal and continue with that goal, or just sort of give up halfway through because it got a bit hard. Um, photography's been hard for me. It hasn't been easy. I've had my ups and downs. I've wanted to quit. I want to just give up and sell yeah, my camera. That's part of being creative. You go through that as yeah, a creative person. There is, everyone Especially goes, when you're getting bombardment of negativity. Exactly. Everyone goes for a phase, but it's it's how you deal with it. Yeah. Um, you can only you can only come up stronger. Yeah. Well, we're going off the off the context of Scott now yeah. and, and this memorial. Oh, look at those boats out in the in the, in the background there. Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful view for Scott to have. 100 years since uh, since the fatal uh, 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 deaths up in the uh, in the uh, pole. He never gave up though, so he had the determination to do mm. what he wanted to do. Nature won. Yeah. Well, he probably wouldn't have been remembered if he if it, if if he had never died. Actually. Yeah. It's quite often the the case with things. But um, yeah, it's uh, quite touching. One of his uh, one of his uh, expedition members was a guy called Oates, and I've already mentioned that Oates uh, realised he was going to die of hypothermia, and yeah. he said, "I'm I'm go uh, Scott. I'm going out. I might be some time." And Scott knew that he was going to die. So I use that as a joke now whenever I'm going out or, or, or saying goodbye to somebody else. I say I'm going out, it might be some time. Yeah.
I mean, like, I think what was like we all should learn from is don't like become angry just because you might have failed at something. Take that negative and turn it into a positive. Just because you failed at it, it doesn't mean you can't try it again. Um, life is too short to sort of like, you know, be negative about things. Yeah. If you if you enjoyed doing something, like he he obviously enjoyed doing this, as he wouldn't have even bothered to to do it. So easy to change your mindset into either di any direction, really. Yeah. You can force yourself and make yourself feel negative and, and angry with the system all the time because you, everybody can well the thing is uh, the whole world and everything in the universe is really built on different uh, realms of chaos yeah. so nobody's writing anything they do but a lot of people think they're writing what, what they do yeah. uh, or what they're saying uh, so uh, you can't let them get you down you've just got to uh, look at your own point of view and be focused on what you're doing exactly but take uh, views of other people on board otherwise you end up uh, going totally individual and being a freak in some ways. Yeah. Well, it's a nice day in Plymouth then, isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad. So how's your photography doing? Um, not too bad, actually. They need to get out a little bit more. But yeah. It's, it's going all right. So what does photography mean to you? Um, everything. It's like my life. Yeah. It's like a passion. Um, it means so much, like, I don't think there's any real word that can describe it, to be honest. It's made, made you see the world with open eyes. Yeah, yeah. It's, I've, um, I've learned a lot the past, like, two years. Yeah. Um, that I'd never thought I'd learn. Um, yeah, just everything just seems to be, like, fitting into place. It's not always easy, is it? You know, it's, um, trying, I mean, it's, it's easy to take the pictures, but trying to move them and and trying to get established as a photographer is probably the most difficult part of anybody's uh, career. Yeah, it's like, like I've always said, anyone can point and click, but it takes that one certain person to sort of get that like unique photo. Yeah. And that's what I think photography is. It's it's about like uniqueness. Um, anyone can point a flower, like point a camera at a flower and take a photo, but yeah. it takes that one person to take a photo of that flower at, a di at that perfect angle. What do you yeah. look? What do you look for? when you take a picture? Um, something different, really. Yeah. Um, I try to think that, like, to myself, I want to take something, take a photo of something that no one else would. Yeah. You know, like, try and find something completely different. Yeah. So that's generally what, like, you know, I try to do. Yeah. Try to catch, like, the uniqueness in anything, really. So how did you get into photography? Um, actually, uh, I was doing modelling, and... I, I basically thought that I, I wanted to be behind the camera, not so much in front. Yeah. Like, as well. Um, but I've always wanted to do photography since, like, since I was in, like, care. So um, when the opportunity came that I could actually get a camera, I, I jumped at it and took it, like, with, like, both hands. Yeah. And I've never looked back. It's, like, the best thing that I've ever gotten into. What sort of camera are you shooting on at the moment? At the moment, it's a Fuji HS10. Yeah. Which isn't bad, but like that's just a beginner camera, really. Yeah. So I'm working towards getting a, a better camera. So. Uh -huh. What sort of camera would you like? Um, ideally, the camera I'm looking at for now is a Nikon D3100. Yeah. Um, that would be perfect because it has all the settings that I need. It's simple to use, so you don't need to sort of like fill around too much. Everything's like easily there, but yeah. And what do you prefer to shoot on uh, in, uh, in photographs? Pardon? What do you prefer to photograph? Um, landscape. Yeah. That's the one thing. Like, Nature. Yeah. In general. Yeah, I mean. It doesn't argue back or, or, or nah, say it wants to be taken off. <laughs> exactly, and it's the system. It's always there. There's always something to take yeah. a photo, take a photo of. And uh, a lot of people just don't really see the beauty that mother nature has to offer yeah especially living in a city it's yeah. um a city by the sea with yeah. the country all around it i mean you just have to look over across over the water and you can see like just it, it look it's just um countryside rolling hills fields so really like anyone living here you don't really have to travel far 
to get to the countryside. Well, there's only about 15, 20 minutes walk from the uh, from the city centre in your home and my home, really, isn't it? Exactly. So, and we're sitting outside Scots Memorial. Yeah. In Devonport. It's crazy. I've had never June. never been here, and I've lived in Plymouth for what eight years, eight nine years. Yeah. Somewhere around there. So. So where were you living before you came to Plymouth? Um, I was living in Mere, yeah. which is a little town in Wiltshire. Yeah. Well, that's like proper countryside kind of town. Uh huh. So. A country feels, pumpkin. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's where I want to move back to, or somewhere around the area. Well, that's into the country anyway. Yeah, I I don't want to be living in Plymouth all my life. Yeah. I don't like the mentality. I think the mentality of the city is going backwards, and you've just got to get out of the country to get away from yeah. uh, a city that's full of negativity. To be honest. I mean, if you were like born in a city like born here and spend like all of your life here and never seen like the peaceful of the countryside then it's it's easy to sort of like you know adapt to it and not really see the negative of this city yeah and like the attitude of people but when you've lived in a countryside where you know you can just walk past anyone say hello and they won't give you a funny look and it's so peaceful, you don't need to worry about anything. And then you move to here. I mean, you, you kind of like, it does get to you a lot more. <laughs> yes. But, yeah, like, I, I, you just you have to take a break sometimes. You need to get out of the city. Yeah. Even if it's for a couple of hours, just to not hear like cars, machinery, you know, people yapping, you know, and then just sit there. Like, I personally, I, I like, um, well, I like going out on bike rides, yeah. and I go to Plymouth Valley. Cycle a lot. rides. Yeah. Yeah. And I love to, um, I, I just love to go to Plymouth Valley and just sit, eat my sandwich, and you don't hear nothing. You hear birds tweeping. You know, you just, it's peaceful. You got time. It'd be to like think. here today. Yeah. But a lot quieter. Yeah. I can hear the machinery in it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. But yeah, I just, I'm a pretty mellow person, so getting out and about where there is no like 21st century like noise and it's just it's peaceful to get a one with nature to be honest yeah you That's, acquired a dog was it 18 months ago or how long uh, eight months ago eight, eight months honest. ago it yeah. seems longer than that yeah what sort of dog is it Staffordshire Bull Terrier yeah beautiful beautiful little dog yeah unfortunately bad reputations because you get a lot of bad owners that have them yeah but he won't harm a fly well seeing your dog made me change my opinion on them actually yeah it, it, but I still wouldn't like to upset him. Yeah, he's, though he doesn't really get upset. He's defensive yeah. over me and Amelia, but he wouldn't get upset. He wouldn't get like physically angry at anyone for no apparent reason. Yeah. Um, I think the attitude towards him is outrageous. Like dogs don't. Dogs aren't born to be angry and vicious. Um, dogs aren't the dangerous ones. It's humans. Yeah. Um, they follow after their owner. If you have an owner that's aggressive and violent, that dog is going to turn aggressive and violent. It's like a weapon. You give a wef- weapon to the right person, it's, it's ha- virtually harmless. Yeah. You give it to the, re- t- uh, to the wrong person and it becomes uh, lethal. Exactly. So when people like look at me and give me dirty looks and funny looks and I'm walking Dre, well, um, it, he's harmless. Yeah. Like... I've heard stories of Labradors like biting someone, um, Jack Russells, and it's it's like just because they're all like you know furry and cuddly, it doesn't mean that they're not capable of inflicting serious damage. Yeah. Um, I think it's because it's easy to point fingers at, at a muscly dog, that a dog that looks aggressive by nature, because it's like it's muscly. Yeah. Um, but then. That's like looking at a book and saying that book's going to be absolutely rubbish, I'll never read it. But then you may take the time to read that book and it could be one of the best books you'll ever read. Yeah. That's like the saying goes, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, don't judge a dog by its looks. Yeah. I so mean, you, you've got a girlfriend? Yeah, fiancé. Engaged, uh, fiance. yeah. How long? And you've known each other for three years now? Or you've been engaged for three been years? Been engaged for three years, yeah. Um, but actually, no, not been engaged for three years. Been engaged for about... Been going out for three years, but I think we were engaged for about a year and a half. So and how did you meet? Uh, over Facebook, actually. <laughs> it was just a random friend's request. Yeah. I added her, and then we just got talking. 
and after a period of time we were just talking on Facebook, we decided to meet and then we just like got on basically like started seeing each other afterwards and then yeah. Gave you the security you needed in life at that time really didn't it? Yeah, um, she slowed me down which is a really good thing because um, I wouldn't say I was living dangerously or living on the edge but I wasn't like, I wasn't living my life how I should have been and having someone that's there to support me and to keep me on the straight and narrow is like all I needed. So me and her was the best thing like like that could ever happen to me to be honest. Yeah. And I can't picture my life without her, so. Oh, cool. Let's just have a look at your ear a minute. Yeah. When did you get that done? Um, I started stretching it when I was like, what, 16, 17? Yeah. And then it just sort of got bigger and bigger. But I'm not allowed to go any bigger than this because... Amelia says so. Yeah. <laughs> She thinks it's ugly, so... And she, she doesn't want you to become, have your ear torn off or anything? No, I mean, a couple of times I've got it, like, caught on my uh, T-shirt on my hoodie and nearly had it, like, pulled off, but... Uh -huh. It looks good, I like it. It looks different, so... It's noticeable. Uh -huh. You get, like, like, funny looks or people come up and, like, so oh, it's pretty cool, but... I like it. Um, cool. I, I wouldn't take it out and leave So it. what are your plans for the future? Uh, have you got any? Yeah, to become a professional photographer, have my own business. Blimmin' hard work. <laughs> oh yeah, it's no, not gonna... I mean, the photography's not hard work, it's trying to get established and keep things moving, especially with the with the uh, crash in the market at the moment. Yeah, well, it's that and the fact that now everyone's doing photography in Plymouth. It's like, it's a big thing that everyone's doing it. And, like, I'm not going to say that I'm the best photographer in Plymouth because I'm blatantly not, but... I'm the best photographer in Plymouth. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um... It's everyone's doing it and what really winds me up and gets me extremely frustrated is when people start using start using the word a photographer when they use their phone. Yeah. Um it's a point and click jobby. Um anyone can do that. But yeah, it's just a little bit like frustrating that now everyone's doing it. But it, it's, it entices it, me to work it's like hard. It's story. It's really. It, it's not the equipment you use. It's the size that matters. Yeah. On how you can blow, <laughs> blow, blow them up. <laughs> oh yeah. But it really does. Like it is frustrating. But like it just entices me to work harder, to try harder. Yes. To. To do things that like every other photographer hasn't thought of doing. Yeah. Because. Um, I I like to learn new stuff all the time. I like to do new things. So. Um, I, look, I think of myself as a very creative person yes. and in photography I can be creative I can try new stuff and like you may like I look, I look back on it and some of the things I've done are absolutely rubbish but you don't know until you try yes. you don't know like you take a photo and you may think that'll look, that'll look good you take it in it and it won't but then you learn from that so then the next time you take a photo of that certain thing you can try it differently well, the problem with using digital cameras, as we've already spoken about earlier on, you're using a plasma screen, and when you're in direct daylight, you can't see what you're taking. No, exactly. So you, you can't be 100% sure whether the image is going to be good or bad till you get home and look at it in, in a computer edit suite. Exactly, and like also, I mean, when you're using your light viewfinder, it's not so bad, but I can't use my viewfinder on my Fuji because when they made it, they decided to put the viewfinder level with the, uh, the screen, so when I am using my viewfinder. Design fault. Yeah, it is, it's a huge design fault. And it doesn't seem they fixed, it doesn't seem they've done anything to fix it with the HS20 or HS30, because when you're using the viewfinder, your nose is squashed against against the actual screen. Yeah. So that makes the screen all grubby. Uh -huh. So it's like, I, I can't use, use it as that. And also because it's a bridge camera, I can't manual focus because it's, it's just useless. Yeah. The uh, focus ring's right up against the body, uh -huh. so you're having to bend your wrist around to like even try to focus. Then you've got a stupid little like box around it, which is all blurry. Yeah. And it's just it makes it's useless. So unfortunately, I can't manual focus on that. I can on any other camera, but that's just it's too difficult to use. It's frustrating. Yeah. So that's why I'm working towards getting a new camera. I feel like that I can. I can progress a lot more. You did go to art college for a while, but you didn't stay there. 
Yeah, I, uh, it wasn't for photography. I went to art college. Um, I went for a stage where I wanted to like paint and draw, and then uh, I just kind of like I went. It was like a six-week course, yeah. and I think I did two weeks of it, and I just thought it wasn't for me, so I left. Yeah. Because um, yeah, it just it wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah. And then yeah, then photography sort of like the cat. Then I then I had the opportunity to get my camera, and that was it. That's. That's why that's what I've stuck with, and I'll continue to stick with it the day I die. Because drawing, I'm not very good at. So, so what do you think of the job situation in Plymouth? Well, obviously there's jobs out there, but there's more and more people unemployed in Plymouth, and there's if there's like one job stuck in shelves, everyone's going to apply for it, no matter regardless of their qualifications, they they need a job. So you're constantly in competition, and I know that's always the case throughout years and years. But when you've got a high number of unemployment, and then they're all playing, applying for the same job, over half the CVs aren't going to be seen because there's too many like for them to look at. Yeah, you can be overqualified as well or underqualified. Exactly. It's, so, a, it's a very you know awkward situation. And the fact is, most of the jobs in Plymouth are, are minimum wage orientated instead of looking for the high profile jobs that, uh, and the inspiring jobs to bring people in to exactly. the city. Plus the simple fact is, um, the government's making it so, so much harder for the unemployed that do have their own flats um, to get back into work. I know firsthand, I want to work I'm not saying I want to like be unemployed for the rest of my life because it's easy, but it is easy because if you go back to work, you've got a hell of a lot more to pay out for. And well, I mean, you told me that uh, I didn't realise that, but you told me that uh, if you get a job, you've got to subsidise your girlfriend, so you have yeah. to. Uh, so the job that you're in has got to pay for two people instead of looking after yourself. Exactly. Like um, the last job I had, um, Amelia didn't work; she was unemployed. So she was on JSA and she got £12 a fortnight and I wasn't on a huge amount of hours, I wasn't earning a hell of a lot of money and You were probably my... earning as much as you would on JSA because you were in yeah, part-time work anyway. exactly, so um, I got the job thinking great I can save up for a new camera, get new equipment and actually I was just having to pay for bills and to, to su me to survive and I was having to pay for Amelia to survive mm. I don't blame her for that at all, it's, that's not her fault at all but the way that this, the way the government is looking at it, is ridiculous, um, and it, it's they need to change, but they won't. They're, they're moaning about people being unemployed, making it harder for benefit for people on benefits. But if you want people to like actually bother to get a job, then you need to start thinking about helping them when they're in a job, because the money that they're going to be earning, a lot of people don't want full-time staff; they want part-time staff because the companies can't afford to run full-time staff so you're not earning enough to pay for your rent you're not earning enough to pay for your bills and especially in the circumstances that I am if I get a job I'm gonna have no money at all I want to work to reap the benefits of my labor I want to like be able to go out and enjoy myself buy new things not work just to pay off my bills um, I don't want to be another robot another cog in the system of bullshit because that's that's not like that's not who I am. That's not what I'm gonna be. I don't like being pushed in any direction of a direction that I want to push myself in. But it's just gonna like, it's just gonna be more and more difficult for people to go into work now, and the government ain't seeing it that way. Yeah. Well, right, thank you, Ben. That's right.
Music with great thanks by John the Prey of Souls from the album Deck of Cards. Thanks to Ben James, model, photographer and father. You can find him on Facebook. This has been a Chris Summerfield video 2018. You can contact me at ccsphoto12 at hotmail.com and if you can help to sponsor my videos you can pay for me at ccsphoto1 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching the video. It's a